In today's war, it's all about Town Hall 12. These teams both favor air attacks. We'll see if we can pick up some tips and tricks here, especially when we see players like Chi Chin, who has these crazy skelly donut lalos. And if we see some, we'll break them down a little bit further for you. Let's go dive into this war, guys, and let's cheer on these teams. This is the number one ranked versus the number two ranked team in the GCC tournament. And you're going to see some crazy Town Hall 12 attacks here. Some of the meta attacks you're going to see. A very high hit rate, I almost guarantee it from these teams. We're kicking it off here with Thanos from God's Reign to start off this war, but we're in for a good one, guys. There's a lot of pro players across these teams, and let's we'll see what they got for us today. We have the King diving in towards the defensive queen, but finds a big Tessa farm there as he invests the, fr the, the freezes to try to get to her, but he's not going to get to her because the big Tessa farm that popped on him, so... A little bit of an issue here. He does get a CC pull there. I don't know that he got a full CC pull, but he will pop that Queen ability and try to get through the defensive headhunters. He uses the extra lightning that he had. The He zapped out the core multi-inferno, and then he held on to one of the lightnings to actually use for defensive headhunters. He kind of misses the minion with the, with the poison, so that's a bit of an issue. He's going to have to go ahead and deal with that, but... He's, he's got to figure out how to deal with the defensive queen. That Tessa farm really, really countered his entry here. We know that this is a very, very strong approach, and I like what he did to start it off here, but it just is not panning out for him because of that big Tessa farm. But he does get the Stone Summer to drop out a dragon. Then I'll finish dealing with the defensive CC, and now it goes over to the defensive queen as well. It's probably worth the freeze right there. It's probably worth the freeze. He doesn't use it, though, and he'll hold on to the freezes to make sure he gets the Town Hall down here. Because it might be a miss here unless it can somehow get this queen down. There's still another super minion that never got dried out of the CC. The traps really messed him up on this one here. He really needed that defensive queen down. Curious whether he can actually recover this or not. But he has the warden into a good position here. And he'll hit 50% right as he activates the town hall. So good approach there. Everything's going right here except for the super minion and the defensive, defensive queen. The attack is doing just fine. He just needs the pups and stuff to go take out that minion. Or his warden to turn around and take a shot at it. I'll weaken up a little bit there. But the minion's going to go back to his warden and continue to chip away there. He's got tons of balloons here. There goes his warden. And the defensive queen will be chipping away here hard. I don't think he's going to have an answer for this queen. It is going to be a defense to open up here, guys. That Tessa farm on the king's entry absolutely shut this attack down. And... He should have been able to get the king to go in there and not only take out the queen, but also pull a full defensive CC so the queen could have handled it. And between those two problems, that Tessa farm counters his attack in its entirety, and it will be a defense into the 80s. Kicking off with the nearly all pro team out of your death, it's Chichin out of Japan. Coming in with a skelly donut with a bat spell to go take out the Inferno, skeleton spell to destroy the CC, and then you'll need to break the ring of defenses near the edge of the base there, flawless skelly bat donut. Remember guys, the invisibility spell needs to be centered about three to three and a half tiles away from the building that you're trying to take down with those skeletons or bat spells, but you can't put it too close, otherwise it makes the building invisible. You can't put it too far, otherwise the skeletons are not invisible and then they get targeted so you gotta you gotta put the spacing there absolutely perfect and they are very very proficient at it he dives in his heroes to go after the town hall here and he just used a balloon over on the top side of the base there to funnel the king to go inside of the base to go pick up some extra value there but also he's trying to get the king to go in because he's trying to break the ring of defenses around the hole that was created by the skelly donut so taking out the top inferno he needs to make sure that there are no defenses on the the from that hole that's created with all the storages included between there and the edge of the base now the lalo will circle around the right side of that hole as the king collapsed through and took out all the defenses on that le that edge of the ring that's created it's kind of a fat ring but <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. He's got a good push into the Eagle Artillery here. He puts the Stone Summer to go after the inner path to go over to the Multi Inferno. Collapses in through the Eagle Artillery heavily, and he still has that ward ability, and he's got a couple of headhunters. He needs them to go after the defensive queen here. I see that they're deployed now. They're making their way to the base there. Pop that ward in, protect the headhunters. They cross all the way through, lock onto the defensive queen, and will take her down. Perfect timing, and that ward ability. 
Deals with that threatening hero that shut down our last attack. He's got the freeze for the multi inferno, and there we go, guys. That was much, much better executed than that, that last one there to get the defensive queen down. He had the defensive queen be dealt with during the Lala, which I always, even if you're even if your heroes are going in after something else, you always want to bring those headhunters to go deal with the defensive queen. Like always is a backup method, you know? It's worth it because you think about it, if the queen takes out two balloons, then you already paid for your headhunter, right? So it's be it's worth it to always have those headhunters and make sure that you can get her down even when things go wrong, unlike uh or like we saw in that last attack there. So nice job here from Chi Chin. Absolutely crushed that base and your death takes an early lead. So let's look at the exact spell placement and spell timing that they use for this attack here. So notice how he puts the rage down first. If you want to add an earthquake, it's a little bit of a safety net there. You can throw the earthquake down. I recommend you use it in advance, but then the invisibility placement is absolutely key here. So we see that the invisibility placement is one, two, three and a half tiles away so basically center of the one two three fourth tile away same away from the cc here we have one you have two three and then the center of the fourth tile here so that exact spacing the center of the fourth tile away from the building that you're trying to make so that the invisibility covers the skeletons and the bats but doesn't cover the building itself is the key placement if you're going out to the town hall or the eagle artillery with an invisibility cover like maybe you're using sneaky goblins and then you go snipe a town hall then you could be a little bit closer because they have a bigger footprint but the spacing next to the inferno needs to be pinpoint anchor because his footprint is so 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 small so you can see that the bat spell came down afterwards he just got that skeleton spell the bats actually need less time to destroy the building than the skeleton does so he's alternating through the different spells here but watch the placement of the invisibility every single time it's placed three to three and a half tiles away in this case he goes three and a half tiles. Jerry will strike for our second attack out of God's reign. We have a dragon with lightning. We'll go with the lightning to take out the expo and the air defense on this left side of the base here. Now, notice how they put the lightning and dragon attacks more close to the edge of the base to try to control the pathing of the dragons. It's all about the funnel that's created by the lightning. You're not just specifically going after the, the defenses, which are obviously, you wanna get some high value targets there, but you're trying to primarily create pathing and it, going after a compartment that is close to the edge of the base there makes so that every single one of those dragons are gonna stay very, very central once they start to make their way in so you can see where like the stone slammer has free reign over the left side of the base there so with the queen diving at the town hall he's got a lot of different options on where he can send in the dragons and there's not a ton of base left definitely like the setup here the king went to the eagle artillery the queen will pop her ability to take out the town hall and take out the air defense over there he puts in an e dragon to the right side of the base and he's actually starting the dragons to go in through the defensive heroes and the Multi-Inferno over on the right side, but the Slammer is completely in charge of the left side of the base there. He didn't even use the Lightning to form the funnel like I would have expected. He actually just used it to funnel the King and take out that section of the base there. So the Dragons got a separate funnel. The King got the funnel from Lightning and then the Dragons took advantage of the King being there to form that part of the funnel. So kind of an interesting approach here. I like it. He's getting a good push through the base here. He's got the Hound that he ended up pulling in the middle of the base out of the defensive CC, and you'll have to power through those pups a little bit there, but he will step into the heal in just a moment here. This looks very, very crushed in. I don't think there's anything to slow these dragons down at this point here. He's got the heal. He's gonna come out of this multi-inferno completely topped off, and he can coast his way through. He's got a minute left. He even brought in a couple minions to go clear up the trash along the edge of the base there. Always, always a good idea, so you don't leave a little bit of straggling trash that ends up getting you a time fail, but he'll, he'll coast through. This is crushed. This is very interesting approach here for a zap into dragon attack but going after big value with each of his heroes went after the zap value is kind of separated from the rest of the base there where he was putting the dragons not typically how we do it definitely not how we typically do it i always uh tend to preach to throw down the lightning where it's going to form a funnel for the dragons but he found his own way through and it doesn't even seem like he lost a single dragon along the way so with this pace section of the base being gone you expect the like the slammer to come in here, something to clear a little bit of trash, and the dragons to go through the town hall. But I, I like what he did. I like what he did. 
It's kind of it was a uh, definitely an interesting approach there, and it worked out really nice for him. All right, here we go. Chichin back in for more. Another Skelly Bat Donut into Subi Hero Lalo. Let's see it one more time. Now this one is gonna be a little bit more a more uh, accentuated. Oh whoa 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 whoa! He does not get the multi down. He got the CC destroyed though. It's gonna be a bit of an issue. All right, that was a big investment for just the CC. And that Inferno's weakened, but not down. He'll try to drive his heroes into the town hall. And the king is gonna tank for the queen on the way in. He had to do two wall breakers because of the single building compartments, plus the open corners, make so you can't wall break the town hall compartment before those single building compartments go down. So force him to use more troops there with the wall layouts that is a very very powerful way to set up your walls in those uh corner compartments like that with single buildings enclosed next to open corners to force people to use additional wall breaks or lose control of their queen but he does get the compartment cleared out there and here comes lalu through the eagle artillery he'll put the slammer to work on the inner path of the base there to go in after that multi inferno that stays standing and we'll see if he can get that he has two freezes and three haste to carry him through the base here as soon as the house starts to cross over the right hand corner he drops in more balloons over there he's got the Zeke artillery down he's this slammer to go take the inner path to get that multi down but he's now having to invest spells into it where he should not have had to had he got that down with the skelly bat donut but he does get to it relatively fast still has his ward ability where are the headhunters they're there they're there they're there the headhunters are inside of the ward ability they pass him under the warden to go after the defensive queen they are able to get her down and coast his way down to the bottom inferno looks like he's still got it under control here he's got the tesla farm in the backside, but there's a lot of balloons still standing he'll wait for this backside wizard tower to be dropped and then direct target with his last balloon and he should be able to coast his way back down to the tesla farm i think he's still got it i don't think that uh multi inferno not going down slowed him down in the slightest here and chichin uh, lalo god is going to get this triple again and keep his team in the lead so this skelly donut was a little bit more tricky and he did make a mistake with it and it ultimately cost him whether he got the inferno and cc down he still got the cc out of it as we saw but let's pause it right here and see exactly where that invisibility is dropping so first up count the tiles between the two buildings that you're trying to take out we have a six tile gap between these two buildings and we're trying to basically find the center line right here so we're trying to find this center line and we can see that three tiles away from both. That puts me far enough that I could drop it right onto that line and cover the protection of the skeletons onto the CC. But since the hitbox of the Inferno is so small, then the spacing is gonna end up covered if I put it right on that intersection right there. So what we wanna do is offset it a little bit there to account for that difference. So that way we get our we get closer to our three and a half tile gap there. So if I shift it down and either go to like right here, or in this case, he went to right here. Now, that ended up being too far. So, I feel like the sweet spot would have been right here. So, if I think if he would have dropped it right there, that would have covered the Inferno, but still protected the skeletons onto the CC. So, let's go ahead and uh, play out and see exactly what happened. So, he put it down at the lower spot, and it ended up not protecting the bats onto the Inferno there, and they ended up getting targeted. So, the angles do get difficult. If you have a straight line and you're trying to basically form a square out of the buildings that you're trying to take down or if they're exactly seven tiles away from each other then you can choose the center mark and you can hit it perfectly every single time but when it's a six tile gap or less and you're starting to work the angles here you need to account for those angles and it starts to get a little bit tricky so we still almost got it he shifted that invisibility up slightly on that last one and he's almost able to protect the bats and almost got that inferno down ultimately he's able to pull it through anyways but i hope that's helpful let's uh, continue on with the war here shaji is live another zap dragon attack here sticking to the skies going after three air defenses notice how every single one of these air defenses is next to an archer tower now can he use those lightning positions for funnels anywhere he's gonna be going to funnel and driving his heroes to go pick up the town hall here hmm. interesting where would you start the is he okay I mean, with all the air defenses mostly taken out here, he's just gonna... 
He's just gonna have the heroes dive into the town hall. The E Drag will work on the outside of the base there to form out the funnel there, and he's gonna make a late approach to the Eagle Artillery, but he's just gonna rush the last air defense on the base. A very, very simplistic approach here. As I worry about this approach because while you did take out a lot of major threats there with the lightning, you have just like random pockets of of buildings removed, but no actual path being created. But look at this, the stone slammer coming from the top set, edge of the base there will actually end up forcing everything to come out of the middle to go over to the Eagle Artillery, which is exactly what he needed here. Actually, I, I'm starting to like what he's doing here. I was a little bit skeptical at first, but I love what he's doing with the stone slammer up in the top quadrant with all the air defenses removed and moves through that area completely unimpeded. He's got the heal to top everything off as they move out of the core of the base and they're going to end up with a little bit of a split here, but the slammer will go over and get this eagle artillery dealt with and the dragons will start to circle around. The pathing for the dragons is not, ob it's obviously not clean to go from the middle of the base there over to the eagle artillery. But he has plenty of force here. He's able to keep it all alive and keep it well protected. So they're going to have enough force to just sweep in and take out the Eagle Artillery area, including the Tesla farm. And the Slammer opens up to another dragon and some balloons to support there. It's absolutely crushed. He's got it. He's got it. This was... It looked like it was just a random shots of lightning throughout the base there. But he was able to take advantage of the lightning up at the top of the base there to... Just set up for the stone slammer to go in and then the lightning at the bottom form the left side of the funnel for the dragons when combined with that electro dragon so there was some funnel it took it a little bit to develop and to be able to see but it was happening it was happening and it was a well-executed attack here from chevy rush leviathan which is selenio from space station gaming gonna stay in the skies here as it looks like he's coming with a blizzard lalo super wizards inside of a blimp Ixchi, okay, he's investing the Warden into it as well. The Warden will protect the Bloons and the Blimp. The Bloons will try to go after the Multi-Inferno here. Blimp sails all the way in to go take out the Town Hall. Drops out some Super Wizards. He is able to get that Multi-Inferno with that Warden ability. And he got the CC pull as well, but the Headhunters quickly take his Warden down. Draw that CC down to the bottom there as he tries to cut the funnel with a minion, but he needs to deal with that headhunter. Super Wizard still getting some good shots in the middle of the base there. Can they get the defensive queen down? They do indeed get the defensive queen down, so he doesn't really need the headhunters that he has right now anymore. But he did take out a decent chunk of the base there, but most importantly, now we see it even more emphasized here. You see the hole that was created in the middle of the base there by the initial setup. We can see it with the lightning. We can see it with the skelly donut attacks. And you can definitely see it when you go in with these blizzard or electron attacks. Where you have a massive chunk of the middle base there removed. But the main thing there is he, he got all the defenses from the core hole that is created there. All the way to the edge of the base so that the heroes now can break off to the right. Quickly clear the trash and they stay together here and they push to the Eagle Artillery. But once the Lalo starts, they're gonna all stay together. He doesn't have the Warden to support the Lalo, so that could mess him up a little bit there. But if he gets the Eagle Artillery down and removes all that extra damage, then he can power through it. He's got the freezes, so he can block out these multi infernos. But you have to remember, without the Warden, the the balloons have significantly less HP than they otherwise would. So they will go down a lot faster. Remember, Warden gives a huge, huge HP boost on top of his his uh, invincibility aura. So that makes a big difference here, especially for light troops like Bloons. But he will push his way into this other air defense. He'll have the Hounds actually likely survive in that area and push across to the other air defense. Oh, nope, they die. It's okay, it's okay. This Queen is still alive. He still has her ability. Uh, at this point, she should almost just pop her ability and get through the wall and try to get to that backside air defense. But he's got more balloons to deploy. He's absolutely got it. There we go. <laughs> Popping his warden with the blimp. We don't see that very often in Town Hall 12. We do occasionally see it in Town Hall 14, but it's always a bit risky to try to do the Lala without the warden to support it. And he just made it look easy. It did protect the blimp. It did protect a group of blues to go after a multi inferno. The investment was worth it, and Selenio locks in our third triple for your death. Okay, more dragons. Sticking to the dragons here. They're seeing some weaknesses, and they're making them work. See what he can do here. We haven't seen a single ground attack the whole war. <laughs> Maybe a note to 
people out there who are not me, because I like ground attacks there. I tend to stick to ground rather than air, but these guys are loving their air attacks here. A bit of lightning to take out the air defense, but also waiting for the queen to circle her pad there and got the damage on both sides of her. He goes after the last shot of the defensive ward with a rocket balloon. And that Electro Dragon will finish cutting the funnel. He's really set up for an entry into the Eagle Artillery here. And I would go to the Eagle Artillery here rather than the Town Hall side. First of all, the Sweepers are pointing away from that area. So that helps out a lot. But I like that he's also throwing down some balloons to go out to this Archer Tower. Can he get it? Oh, almost. He'll get it off the chain, though. He'll get it off the chain. There we go. Get that Archer Tower down. That e drag is picking up some good value. He's just doing a couple small things to keep that e drag supported over there. And it's doing some wonders. He'll now go into the Eagle Artillery. The heroes will work to the outside of the base there, which will thin the pathing for the dragons, help cut their funnel even tighter. Hopefully the heroes are able to go all the way around to the edge of the base there and pick up that bottom air defense as well. They should be able to, unless the queen decides to attack a wall at some point and go inside of the base. It's always a possibility with that queen. He has the blimp that he can use to go get the town hall. He's hold on to that ward ability right now. And he's got a heal spell as well, so he can get his health healed up through these multi-infernos, and he can use the Warden ability to protect the blimp on its way to go take that town hall down. There we go, pop that ward ability, and make sure that blimp arrives to the town hall safely. A long approach there. If we're using the dragons or the heroes to take the town hall directly at the early parts of the attack, then you can use the stone slammer normally in this attack. But if you're gonna be Starting opposite of the town hall, then the blimp is always a good choice there to go and pick up that town hall. He's got a baby dragon or something over on this top side of the archer tower. Got the baby dragon. He's still got rocket balloons as well. He's gonna have to circle all the way back to that multi inferno, or maybe he can sneak in the baby dragon over there. He does put the baby dragon over the right side. Okay, he's gonna drop in the rocket balloons to cut the outside pathy to push the dragons into the air defense quickly. The mortar down, but not quite the cannon. Queen is still alive. Queen survives. Okay. She's probably going to die to the cannon up ahead unless the dragons can get to it fast enough. No, she'll go down. That's fine. We got a lot of punch here. Oh, and a lot of dragons. He's just really fighting the clock to get back to the core of the base. That heal definitely helped hop him off as he made his way through, but dragons ended up coasting right past that multi-inferno and not taking it. 20 seconds to get back to the core of the base here. The warden is still dishing out some good damage here. He's got the sweeper engaged first. That's gonna make so he doesn't get knocked back at all. He's got these buildings already weakened up a little bit, but not much. He'll get through this storage. It's gonna be very close here. Five, four, three, one dragon dies! That was a critical dragon and 98%! And God's Reign has now missed two, and that's really gonna hurt their chances in this war. Here we go, here we go. We got some ground attacks. We're coming in with a super giant and bowler attack here. He's gonna start in with the blimp to go after the town hall area of the base. There looks like a blizzard into super giants and bowlers. We'll be making their way into the space here. Needs to get this town hall down with the super wizards. Getting some chains to get the buildings behind him as well. Also is dealing with the defensive CC as well. Can he get the defensive CC out of the way completely? He does indeed. Put that expo. It's a very low HP and it will deal some damage to the queen as she rounds around this edge of the base. I don't know which way she's going. Looks like he's trying to force her to go north. I, she, I think she will. She'll go north. Yeah, she will. She will. She'll go up to the uh, camp there and then start to make her way in. He's got uh, a couple wall breakers. So as soon as this, this bomb tower goes down, then he can wall break and he'll go to the next compartment down the line and get him into the multi inferno. Here comes the bowlers and the. Super Giants to meet in with the Queen. The pack ended up going to the inside of the base there. The King goes to the outside and get the defensive Queen down over the wall. Luckily, the defensive Queen actually jumped to the wall to be able to get to, so the King could actually get to her. Otherwise, we lost a lot of value out of the King there. But there's the ward ability to charge his way through the Multi Inferno and through the Eagle Artillery. He only has the one jump, so he can't get to the backside Multi Inferno. So he'll just have to coast his way into it later on. But the healers are kind of, oh, no, they switch over to the bowlers. The bowlers. We'll get the support of the freeze as he waited for those healers to switch over him. All the giants are going north out of the top of the base. And if these bowlers end up surviving and beating through the wall to get to this multi inferno, then he's absolutely got the triple. But they're leaving now. They'll keep the healers on him, so it's okay. The top group there doesn't need the healers right now. The healers are right where they're going to get the most value possible. 
Baby Dragon comes down the line up ahead there, and he wall breaks back into the multi. Love it. And everybody's attacking a good wall to push him in there, raging up as they start to make their approach in. And that was a clever spot to throw down the next wall breaker, going right through that open corner. Didn't get the Eagle Artillery compartment open, but it's fine. He pushes through, gets that multi down. He's just fighting the clock now, and he's just got to wrap his way down to the bottom corner here. I am a little bit worried about this Arch Tower defending that corner there. He will need something to split off to it. He's gonna have to go through at least one wall here. The end up with end up with two different walls broken there. The giants, where are they targeting now? They're going all the way to the Tesla. That's kind of weird. Queen's starting to break north though. If he can get the if he can get a separation, oh he's not gonna separation. He's gonna end up going all the way down, down south here before he can make his way back over the left hand corner. I think he's gonna time fail this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's gonna time fail this, guys. He pops that queen ability to try to speed things up here, but he's trudging along. He needs something to split off and go to that left-hand corner to go deal with that arch tower. It is going to be a miss. It's going to be the first miss out of your death. A very, very cool, fun attack here, but not going to be enough. And it gives a chance here to God's Reign. If they can triple their next one, they can put some pressure onto Marnal. God save my queen. No, not my queen. His queen. Let's see what we can do here. As he closes out the war for God's reign. If they can get this triple here and get a defense, if they can stop Marnal, they can still potentially win this war. So put the pressure on him. Queen comes in at the bottom here. An ice golem and a wall break to get her into the Eagle Artillery, staying away from the CC pole here. King goes in down the line and they get a... Where is he going? Okay, he's going to wall break into the air defense there. Is he even going to attempt to go in and go after the single inferno? If he does, he needs the spell score. He's got the skeleton spell, so he's targeted there. He pop his ability. And get away from that inferno. Let it reset. The barbarians will get this air defense down. Okay, I like it. I like it. He doesn't go after the inferno. He just wall broke us so he could get the king to grab out that air defense, and he does. Not directly. His barbarians get it, but... Bane was able to get the artillery down and trim out a nice section of the base there as well. Those leave up the entire core of the base. They got a decent amount here out of the heroes, but he still needs to get the core of the base there cleared out. And it looks like he's going to insert the Stone Slammer directly to the core of the base, going after the single Inferno. I'm too happy with these buildings to be up. That might throw off his path. I don't even know where the Stone Slammer is going to go after it comes off of the, the single Inferno. Does it go over to the Expo? Does it go down to the expo, or does it go to the inferno in the middle of the base? One way or another, he's going to need to invest the freeze into resetting the beam. Oh, now we got Tesla's popping in the middle of the base there. He does end up having some rocket balloons come out of his stone slammer, and they will make their way towards the middle, but they're going to clear the traps. They're not going to have enough to take out that inferno in the middle. And the Tesla's had filled out the entire core, but he's got the ward ability covering the town hall takedown, and he's got the poisons down onto the defensive CC, so handling that. So far, so good. More balloons drop in as he has the hounds reach the right side of the base there. Heals in the middle base as he goes to the multi inferno. Frees up the defensive queen. Drops in the headhunters onto the defensive queen. Does he get her down? That's critical. He does get her down. Okay, he's got the last little pack of balloons here. He's got the skeleton spell. Use the skeleton spell. Use the skeleton spell. Distract the warden. Come on. He's got the freeze as well. He still has a chance to use the skeleton spell. There we go. He's got it. He's got it. Warden locks onto the defensive warden. Defensive warden is stuck onto the skeletal spell. He does have some damage incoming to his warden. He freezes up the last of the defenses all together. But wait, there's still an expo over the right side. He's gonna have to cross over there and get it. He seems to have enough force here to power through. Does he have the time? Time's gonna become another major factor in this attack, guys. The warden survives. Get that archer tower down, but he doesn't have enough to get the targeting to pull the warden over to the expo so he's gonna be behind this big pack of troops here but there's only 10 seconds to go he's got a big big pack moving and the storage over there is already weakened up a little bit there it's gonna be a close one but i don't think he's gonna make it guys he's gonna fall just a couple of seconds short again and he does have enough force to take it it is gonna be a 98 percent and another miss for god's reign here we go marnal will come in to close out this war with a Sui Hero Lalo. He'll be using a jump to carry into the town hall. King will start the charge into the base here. We'll have headhunters deploy out there and he'll quickly freeze them up there so his heroes can handle them while poisoning up the super minions. Tries to throw in a baby dragon to form a funnel but ends up getting sniped off by a black mine over there but that's fine. He's still got enough punch here with the heroes to easily get through the defensive hero with his king while the queen sits back and takes the last shots at this town hall. We'll take it down. 
Needs to go after the defensive queen still with his ability, but that's fine. He'll get the value out of the heroes that he's looking for. Pick up the CC, the defensive queen, and the town hall is really going to set this up strong. He's got the heal spell to cover the multi inferno in the middle of the base. You know, rush the Eagle artillery is his priority here. Um, we'll go to the inside path. I'd like to throw it to the inside path there while the balloons go to the perimeter buildings. Lammer dump those troops into that multi inferno in the middle of the base there. He's got some balloons and anything else in there? Is it just balloons? There's a baby dragon in the mix as well. The balloons do not hit the rage though. They end up going off to the right, and so the other pack has to go in and take out the core, but he got the ward ability protecting them. Multi down. Come on, it's doing so much damage in there. He's got the heal that he actually used at the bottom of the base there rather than the middle. But there's three multi infernos. Get this multi down. Get the multi down. There's the haste for the backside there, but the balloons are dropping fast. Oh, he's not gonna make it. He's not gonna make it. The balloons just got shredded by the three multi infernos. A very difficult task to throw a Lalo through three multi infernos and he will end up missing here so that 98 percent gone through for the triple it would have made so that god's reign would have won by literally one building